Hello, everybody. Welcome to the third podcast. Um, I decided to title this podcast The Magic of New Beginnings because as many of you who have watched my first and se second podcast know, um, you know, I've tried to, tried being the word, um, put a closure to everything that happened to me um, with my past relationship. And honestly, the closing of that door actually was a lot messier than I expected. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but basically after I filmed the second podcast, not long after, it came to light that there was another student of his that 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 he was um, with. And she found out, funnily enough, because um, she wanted to watch my podcast. I'd never spoken to her ever. And she messaged me asking to see my podcast because she had gone through a divorce recently and she wanted to, <laughs> she wanted to watch it. <laughs> so that's how she found out. And long story short, the three of us like had no idea about each other. Daniel knew everything, but the three of us did not. So you can just imagine how much drama that spiraled into. So this is why I've told some of you in, in class that I basically haven't slept well since Thanksgiving because <laughs> there's been so much drama in my life since Thanksgiving, since that fateful day. Um, and yeah, so, you know, sometimes when you close one door and open another, you know, you think that that should be like close the door, open the door, but it's not so simple. And um, if I sound a little bit like this in the podcast today, it's because probably inside my system, there isn't fully a calmness quite yet. Um, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. But yeah, so back to this thing that I was saying about I've been trying to figure out, like, for example, why have I not been able to sleep that well, right? And yeah, of course, there's a lot of drama. But I think what is difficult for me is that for the first time in my life, I feel like I'm living such dichotomy in terms of my inner emotions. So we've talked about this idea of dichotomy before, which is the nature of all things, right? Um dichotomy just means opposition it just means that um there is some kind of uh balance that one must find between opposing forces emotions limits like and for the first time in my life i have experienced such an intense dichotomy that that's probably what's keeping me and my system on high alert so for example like i am like I said to you many times, I've never been happier and more grateful. I'm so in like a state of euphoria when I'm dancing and feeling free inside myself with my new partner and enjoying our time together so immensely. Every single second is so precious to me and makes me so fulfilled. And yet at the same time, I'm still trying to recover from the shock and sort of the continuation and endless drama that's happening with my ex and still dealing with how my inner child continues to be triggered, right? By the fact that, for example, I have to see him three to four hours every day, six days a week with his, um, with, with his new partner, which is our student that he's not with. And how I'm with my men <laughs> and so happy and yet he's right there. And so it's being able to juggle and find harmony within these opposing forces and pulls of emotion and psyche are is definitely a huge challenge for me. And so that's probably why I haven't been sleeping well. And, um, you know, with time, I'm going to be able to find a balance, but it's, it's really 
this idea of dichotomy that I want to speak about a little bit with you guys today. And uh, I know a lot of you are super curious to hear about my new partnership and more about Anton. And I just want to make sure that like there are a lot of things that are very personal to him that I'm not going to share with you, right? I'm going to share sort of how I feel around him and why it is, how it is that we came together and why it is that I feel so happy. But um, I'm just going to tell you right now that there are personal things about him that I don't feel that is right for me to share. But anyways, so getting into that, right? Like it's been about, let's see, it's December 9th and we met on October 13th for our first practice. So it's almost been October, November, December. It's almost been two months. Wow, only two months. It's not long. <laughs> but yeah, um, when we first got together, we didn't even think that it would be a serious tryout because um, he was amateur. I was pro. He didn't want to turn pro. Um, I didn't want to go back to amateur at that time. And anyway, so... And he's quite a bit younger and like our coaches just said, why don't you guys practice together so you guys can both just stay in shape and, and work on things for yourselves. And I was like, oh, that's a great idea. So we decided to practice together. And before long, I was like, holy cow, like, why is this working so well <laughs> in terms of like, not just um, the dancing, but how we communicate and the feelings that we have between us when we're interacting. When I was so nervous when I first um, tried with him, like I still remember like so clearly the first moment he took my hand and we took our first steps because together, because I had honestly not danced with a man in five years, you know, other than my ex. And I'd never for, you know, for a while since we split, I basically couldn't imagine like dancing with another man. Like I, that was part of what was so painful. I would dream about our touch and the steps that we had created together over the years. And I would dream that I was still dancing them. And that was really hard and painful. Um, you know, like I couldn't imagine dancing with another man and feeling good inside of the connection because Daniel and I, that Daniel was all I knew at that point. It had been half a decade, right? And so when I took Anton's hand for the first time, I was shocked. I was shocked. I was like, wow, like I can feel really good again with someone new. Like this was mind blowing for me. And then as time went on and and we worked through things and we danced even more and we communicated. I was like, wow, I really can feel amazing um, with him, with someone new. And so, yeah, that's how it all started. And I've told you guys on Instagram that I never thought that I would find someone that that was so compatible. Like it was a huge shock, a huge surprise. Um, and I think that what I'd never realized before um, I met Anton is that having a deep psychological compatibility with your partner, whether it's dancing or otherwise, is really important. Meaning that your inner children get along and soothe each other. And I'm not going to get into too much detail about his inner child, but I'm just going to say that um, it's really important to find someone who doesn't trigger your inner child, who doesn't tend to trigger your inner child. And the reason is because, like I've said many times, your inner child will always be with you and the wounds of your inner child will always be the same because those wounds developed from your experiences, your actual experiences growing up, and that history can no longer be changed, right? You can you cannot change the past. Whatever happened in the past, happened. And so the embracing of the inner child is like a consistent, ongoing, lifelong procedure. Of course, it definitely gets easier. And 
with time, your inner child is going to be really a part of who you are and one with you, but it's still it's still a lifelong process. And so finding someone who doesn't tend to trigger your inner child is for me a huge component of overall compatibility. And um, finding someone who actually soothes your inner child is even the next level up. And so that's what Anton, I feel, do for each, and I do for each other that I never really had with my ex. Like my ex and I, our inner children did not get along. Like our inner children triggered each other to no end. And granted, if I had healed my inner child more, and if he had healed his inner child more by the time we actually met, um, it would have been a little bit better. But knowing what I know now about myself and about him, it still would have been really, really, really hard. And life is already really hard. Dancing is already really hard. Having a marriage is already really hard, let alone having this deep psychological incompatibility being a challenge. You know what I mean? It was just, yeah. And this idea of this psychological compatibility sort of brings me to my next <laughs> next point, which is, so the the most uh, prevalent question I've gotten since I posted about Anton is, um, are you guys together? <laughs> are you guys together? Okay, so first of all, I'm not going to answer this question with a yes or no. And the reason is because it really depends on what you are, what, what this definition of together is, which I don't even believe is relevant. So I'm going to talk about a different topic, and hopefully by the time I finish talking about it, you guys will understand what he and I have between us and why it's so important um, and it was such a huge part of the reason why I'm so happy with him and I decided I really want to dance with him. So I think that what's most important, first of all, after everything that I've experienced in my last partnership and also in the previous dance partnerships I had, the most important ingredient to success, the most important thing is your relationship with your partner, whatever that relationship looks like. But that is the most important ingredient for success and fulfillment and happiness. Um, I never understood that. I never really understood that. And when I say your relationship with your partner, what I really mean is that the secret to success, in my opinion, is intimacy. If you just look at the dance world today, I know many of you dance, how many couples are truly intimate with each other? Very few. Of course, there are other ingredients to dancing that are very important for success, like your technique, your partnering skills, um, there are many components, your competitiveness, but the secret is intimacy because it's the most difficult to achieve. It's the most rare. When I say intimacy, I don't mean romance. I don't mean chemistry. I don't mean sexual desire. I mean this ability to connect on a deep, physical, psychological otherworldly plane with your person and being able to grow that to protect that to maintain that over time under stress under <laughs> duress um when shit hits the fan which it will in any relationship over time that's what I mean by intimacy. And that is what I feel like that I have with my partner. And it's what I never had with my ex from the beginning, which is a little bit shocking, right? Because you, for those of you who've been with me for a long time, you, you know, you're like, wow, you guys were so in love in the first year and a half. We were. 
that's why I said it has nothing to do with romance, has nothing to do with chemistry, it has nothing to do with sexual desire. My ex and I were very romantic. We were very romantic for a long time. We were very much in love. We were very much, you know, we had great chemistry for a while in the beginning, for sure. But that's not intimacy. I never felt intimate with my ex. Sometimes I remember I would wake up and I would like, turn my head and look at him sleeping on the pillow and I would feel that he was like a stranger and towards the end of our partnership even though we spent so much time together we traveled we danced we experienced so much I felt so alone and I think he did too and I felt like we were hundreds of miles apart even though we were right there next to each other and everything became so difficult and so scary I was so full of fear all the time because I felt so alone, because there was such a lack of intimacy, there was such a disconnect on a physical, psychological, spiritual level, that I just felt really, really, really lonely, and really, really, really afraid. And so it's interesting, right, because you can have such a chemistry with someone, you can have such a, I loved my ex, I really did, you can really love someone, but be so disconnected. You can really love someone, but lacks, lack intimacy. And in the dance world, when I look at the top couples that are, I'm not talking about top in terms of results. I'm talking about couples where you're just, you can't take your eyes off of them. They leave something behind when you watch them inside you. They have intimacy. And it, like I said, it doesn't depend on whether or not they're married, husband and wife, whether or not they're sleeping together, whether or not, you know, it's it has nothing to do with that. And so I hope that sort of, that's probably not the most satisfying answer to everyone's question about whether or not um, my partner and I are together. We are together, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, And so going back to what I said earlier, that the most important thing is your relationship. What I also mean by that is taking care of each other's feelings, taking care of each other in every way. Um, because certain things and having boundaries, you know, because certain things, once you, once you say it, you can't unsay it. Once you do it, you can't undo it. There are certain things that I that many things that I did with my ex where I crossed a line that I could never uncross again and him with me similarly but you know when two people when we cross too many lines when you cross too many lines those those the impact of that will be forever right and so that's why you know if you're going to be long lasting imagine like being in a romantic relationship for like 50 years you better not cross any lines because you've got 50 years to make sure you can really sustain this relationship, the purity of it. Um, the, you know, there's so many chances to cross lines if you're going to be together for decades. And then when it comes to dancing, I always think of dancing as accelerated evolution, accelerated everything, because there's so much pressure. There's so much you know, mind, body evolution at the same time, because it's a physical activity that, you know, you dance for five years and I felt like I was with my ex for 50 years, you know? And so anyways, um, being able to take care of your relationship with your partner is so, so, so important. I never understood that, you know, I never understood that. I crossed lines. I, I pretended like we could go back to the way things were that it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Um, and one of the, one of the reasons why I'm so happy, what, one of the reasons, like there's so many, um, the biggest reason why I'm very happy with my new partner is because, and I'm not going to talk about him too much, you know, because that's him, that's his, that's his, uh, side of things. But, my feeling about him. He is very much 
an individual. He is very comfortable in his own skin. He knows who he is, despite his age. I remember he's self-aware and introspective beyond anything I could have imagined someone that age would be. I, I think I told some of you guys before, but like <laughs> three weeks into practice, we were just walking on the street one day and we never really talked that much about psychology or anything. We we're just walking on the street one day and um, he just goes all of a sudden, yeah, the first time I visualized my inner child was this past September. And I remember like I almost tripped <laughs> on the street because I was like, whoa, like where did that come from? I mean, right? Like, and it just, and we talk about our inner children all the time with each other. And it's so interesting because it has nothing to do with age, it has nothing to do with cultural background, it's nothing to do with language proficiency. It's just, that's just how he is. Just that's just how he is, right? And I, because of these qualities that I've said about him and there are many more, I really have a deep, deep respect for him. Um, and that I, that I haven't felt for um, anyone else that I've danced with. And it, I'm not saying it's because he's better. I'm just saying that I think what's really important for me, right? And the things that really um, make me feel inspired by someone and motivated by someone and curious about someone, he has those qualities. Um, he doesn't pretend, he's not a pretender. Um, what you see is what you get. And he knows the things that need to be improved. He knows the things that are very good. And he doesn't pretend like he is something or someone that he is not. And for me, this is huge because I think I've said to you guys in the past that that was one of the things that really made me so irrationally angry about my ex because he was always pretending to be something or someone that he wasn't and I just could not handle it I could not pretend with him I'm and and I was not gentle and it triggered my inner child that I had not done the work to heal and therefore I outbursted and I hurt him etc and hurt myself but point is at the base of it, you know, he was pretending all the time, all the time. And it triggered me so much. And that is something that I realized, like, it's not for me. I can't do that. And so finding someone who is very real and very honest with himself and with me has been the biggest breath of fresh air for me. And it inspires such a respect, you know? And so there's a lot of different things um, going on. There's me having healed my inner child and being able to go into something without fear and to be able to see the person for who he is um, and what he brings to the table and to be able to accept imperfection in him and myself, right? And then there's the actual person himself and his qualities and his uh, characteristics that are compatible with me and soothe my inner child and don't tend to trigger my inner child and me vice versa for him, right? And so there's a lot of things that contribute to why it is that I'm so happy and why this beginning for me is so magical and I just you know like Christmas is right around the corner and 
I can't believe that 2023 is almost over because this has been the most extreme year of my life, the most difficult year of my life. I just want to make sure that there's nothing that I'm supposed to say that I actually never plan um, for these podcasts. I just start talking. So I was actually really nervous about this podcast because one, I'm talking about something I really care about, um, my new partnership. Two, um, I still have, like you guys know, this sort of high alert fight or flight uh, quality about my system right now because of the fact that there's still stuff happening. Um, the door is, you know, it's like closed, but it's like vibrating, you know, like there's an earthquake behind that door. Um, let's see. Uh, I see. And yeah, so I'm, I'm just very, very grateful. And I think that part of the feelings that I have for my partner come a lot from gratitude. Like he really, and this is why I'm, I wanted to talk about like the law of attraction, because like I said, once you heal your inner child, once you've done the work, the universe will bless you. You have to have faith. I didn't. Now I do. Like it's truly the law of attraction is a thing because the universe made sure I was ready before it gifted me my new man. And I think that I'm so full of gratitude because it was such a dark time for me. I was healing my inner child, but it was really painful because you guys know, those of you who have started to heal your inner child, you're going to cry. You're going to cry like you've never cried before. You're going to remember things about your childhood that you've repressed for years and years, decades. It's not an easy process. It was really hard and it was a very dark time. And then, you know, as you guys know, Thanksgiving rolled around and crazy truths came to light and those keep happening rolling on right and all this time like he was just right there next to me he doesn't talk very much um, but he was just right there next to me and we were sharing we were communicating and developing this intimacy that just made me feel like I was in this warm bath and that everything was going to be fine um because it was a gift that the universe gave me that I was meant to receive. And yeah, I'm therefore so full of gratitude. I'm so full of gratitude that that's part of what has generated my feelings um, for him, you know? And so it's really hard to define, like when you guys say, what do you feel about him? And what's your relationship, right? When you ask me those questions, this is my answer. It's a complex answer. It's a, it's a, it's dichotomy, right? Because I don't believe that nature operates with the, with man-made definitions, right? Like, can you separate the business and the personal? I guess you could try, you know, you could, you could make rules, human made constructs, and limits and boundaries, but I don't think that that's natural because first of all, as a dancer, right? It's so freaking personal. Dancing is so personal to me. Dancing is so personal to him, yeah? And I think that because so many of us are full of fear and are really not well equipped, especially in the modern world to deal with dichotomy, we delineate with definitions and rules like this is this, that is that, that is that. But that's not nature. And unless you learn how to manage dichotomy and interact with it and play with it and learn to enjoy it, right? You won't fully grasp the beauty and the magic of life because life is nature. Nature is dichotomous, yeah? And so I'm sorry if some of you still think that I'm not divulging enough, but I think you guys know how much I genuinely am happy with, with him. And I think that's the most important thing. And I hope that I've kind of described the origins of that happiness and also given you guys some, I guess, I wouldn't call it advice. I would just call it insight 
from my personal experience as to what are some of the things that are important as a foundation for a happy and successful partnership or relationship, you know, for the long term. And it's interesting because he and I have practiced every single day, three, four hours a day, six days a week, sometimes seven for almost two months. And there has not been a single fight. There's not been really any like significant points of tension whatsoever. And that really just speaks to everything that I was saying about our compatibility, our deep compatibility. Um, and him being the gift that I was meant to receive and perhaps vice versa, right, for him. Um, he's from Ukraine. He came here about five months ago. He was dancing with someone else. They were very incompatible. He actually showed me a video recently, like yesterday. And I've ne he's never, I've never seen him so frustrated and angry. Um, <laughs> Like he's never been like that with me, but he was like that with her. And it just reminded me so much about my irrational anger with my ex. And it's so interesting, like when two people are not compatible and when they trigger each other's inner children, like the difficulty of, of connecting and being intimate and creating and experiencing joy and fulfillment, right? Um, he works very, very hard. He teaches like 10 lessons a day um, it, on top of practicing with me. He's extremely clever, probably the most clever partner I've ever had um, and the most proactive partner I've ever had. Like proactive, like I told, I told you guys, I feel like I am can really slip quite naturally and comfortably into my most authentic and radiant feminine when I'm around him. And I'm not gonna go into this whole man woman role too much, but um, for me, I feel really like a woman next to him. And whatever that means for you, whatever that means for me, there's probably gonna be differences, but I feel like the most authentic feminine version of myself. And so therefore, that is also another reason why I'm very happy. So yeah, um, what else is there to say? Okay. <laughs> I guess what I wanna finish off with is you never know what's going to happen in the future. I have learned this <laughs> the hard way. Um, nothing is for certain. It's actually funny because one of the things that he my partner always says is this word let's see why is this not focusing focus focus let's see and yesterday I told him I'm like I think that word triggers me and he said sorry and he said he's not going to say it again but I said no actually let's see right it's really real and I said to him I said I'm going to start saying that word so it doesn't trigger me as much so now I'm saying like let's see let's see what are we going to do? Let's see. How do you, let's see, because that's actually like the way it is. You, you, there are no promises. This is why I don't like definitions, right? Like the promise of this being this way and this being that way for any length of time, because it's not real. Things are dynamic and constantly in flux. And although we as humans wish for stability and constancy, it's just an illusion that we create ourselves to make us feel better in the moment. But constancy and stagnation is just, it's not real. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, work that way. Nature doesn't work that way. And so, yeah, this, I'm telling you right now, this is how I feel. This is what I believe um, in the present moment. But what could be tomorrow? Who knows, right? Maybe we aren't even dancing in one year. Who knows? But what is important, I think, is to grasp the moment, the present moment, to feel what it is that is truly real in the moment. That you are looking at a person and you are looking at him for who he is. That you are looking at yourself and expressing yourself 
truly, authentically your truth right now in this moment to build a sense of intimacy in the moment with this person that is not based on fantasy, that is not based on a hope. Um, like, it's interesting because it took me so long to take a picture of him and I because I was so enveloped in the moment with him. And I remember like when I was with my ex, when we first got together, I was like taking so many pictures and posting so many pictures um, and like cute little moments. And I think that was because deep, deep down, I didn't really feel like we were meant to be the way that I was trying to portray us to be. And that's why I use those more external sort of contrived and manipulated confirmations to confirm for myself something that deep down on a system-wide visceral level and heart level, I didn't feel. And it was always that way, you know, with him. And with Anton, I'm like, crap, I forgot to take a picture again. Crap, I forgot to take a picture again. Crap, I forgot to take a video again. And that's how I know it's real. That's how I know I'm in the present. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that podcast. I hope that um, you learned a little bit more about my partnership <laughs> and perhaps uh, some uh, some insight that will help you in your relationships, any relationship, any relationship. Um, keep embracing your inner child. The more I spend time with her, the more easy it is for me to be one with her. Yeah. And I'll see you guys for the next podcast. I have no idea what the name of that one will be, what the topic will be, but let's see. Bye guys.